I can see how the camera looks. Damn. <laughs> What's going on, Faded Culture? I'm Adrian Barone. We got my man Emilio here on the chair today. We're gonna be running down the steps on how to do an eight with the mid fade. As y'all can see, we got a huge transformation here for y'all today. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly mention that we're gonna start offering one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls for y'all. We can go in depth with our tutorials or we can simply go over some of y'all's haircuts or answer any general questions that y'all might have. The link will be in the description down below. Feel free to check it out. With that said, give this video a thumbs up and let's jump right into it. Thank y'all for tuning in to another tutorial, guys. Again, like I mentioned in the intro, my brother and I are offering these one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls to go over anything that y'all might need help in. We figured this be a perfect way to help y'all individually. Now to start this transformation, we're gonna start with the number eight guard lever close. And when it comes to longer hair, I do like to feed it into the clipper just to ensure consistency throughout the top. Then recomb the hair in its natural position and go over it a second time. And when it comes to the cowlick, just make sure that you are cutting against the grain. That way the length could be consistent throughout the top. Now dust your client off and let's begin to clean out the sides. I'm gonna start with the number two, lever fully open. And like I said, I'm just gonna clean out the side so when I come back in and set my guidelines in, I can see them as clearly as possible. And I am exaggerating that scoop motion just to make sure I don't dig in and create hard guidelines. Like I said, we're more so just trying to clean out the sides. We're not really trying to set in a guideline yet. And I like working with a clean canvas, so again, dust them off, blow everything off, and let's begin the fade. Starting with no guard lever completely closed, we're gonna start at that temple peak area and drop it as we approach the ear. And for those who are curious, my clippers are zero gap, which I highly suggest you do. I'll leave a video in the description down below on how we zero gap our clippers. I hope it helps y'all. And another tip I do have is I highly suggest you keep a small brush in your opposite hand. So after every couple strokes, you are cleaning the canvas. Make sure that you end up at that same temple peak area on the opposite side. Now with our lever completely open, we're gonna come in and set in our second guideline. We're gonna take this up about an inch or so. Just make sure that you are running this guideline parallel to the one underneath it. Remember, the softer you are with these initial guidelines, the easier it's gonna be when we come back down and erase them. Now with my number one guard lever still completely open, we're gonna continue the process and make our third guideline. You're gonna notice that as I'm setting up the canvas and putting these guidelines in, my lever is gonna stay open the whole time. Now with my number two guard lever still completely open, we're gonna continue. And with this higher guard, with this number two, three, and four, I do exaggerate that scoop motion. Again, just to ensure that I'm not digging in and creating hard guidelines. Now with my number three guard lever still completely open, we're gonna continue the process. And you're gonna notice that if you were initially soft enough with the number two, it's gonna blend into the number three and there's not gonna be no hard distinction between those two guards. And lastly, I'm gonna use a number four lever still completely open and just finish connecting the sides to the top. As you can see, I'm coming straight out the parietal ridge in that crown area. I am not digging in as it will create like a full hawk look if you do dig in. And this is the highest guard that I'm gonna use, but to finish and tightening up the sides, I'm just gonna use clipper over comb technique and that'll be it, connecting the sides to the top. And if you're new to clipper over comb, I highly suggest you put the number one guard and use it as a safety net. By now, you should have the first guideline that we created with the zero, second that we created with the half, and the third that we created with the number one guard lever completely open. We're gonna start with that top one and work our way down. 
using my one and a half guard I'm going to close the lever just slightly, putting it in what I like to call a three-fourths position. It's basically somewhere in between half and fully open. And using mainly the corners of the clipper, I'm going to attack that top guideline. And like I mentioned earlier, if you were softening up with the setup, these guidelines should be removed with ease. Now we're gonna attack that second guideline coming down using my half guard. And we're gonna leave the lever in that 3 fourths position. Do not touch the lever, just leave it the way it is. The only thing we're gonna change is the guards. And as if you notice, this step is creating a faint line above it, but do not take this guard any higher as we will come back right now with the number one guard and remove that line. Just focus on that second line with this guard. Like I mentioned, now to remove that faint line, we're going to use a number one guard and leaving it in that three fourths position. And for that final guideline, we're going to use a three step process, starting with the lever closed and then we're going to open it halfway and then we're going to open it completely. I'm going to work on just this left section and I'm going to use that three step process taking each of those notches up just slightly. So right here I'm starting with the lever closed. Now I'm going to open it halfway and continue. And as we all know this last line could be very tedious, it's probably the most difficult. That's why I do break down this last step into smaller sections. So now I'm opening up the lever completely and here I'm just going to finish off the fade. As you can see, I'm getting very particular using the corners of the clipper. I highly suggest you try it. It lets you get into tighter areas and remove these darker spots without pushing up the fade any higher. And the fade is pretty much done. Now to continue that three step process. The back section, I do break it down into two smaller sections. So here I'm just gonna focus on this left back side of the head. Again, starting with the lever closed. Now I'm opening it up halfway. And finally completely open. All right, real quick guys, I wanted to give a shout out and put y'all onto today's video sponsor, which I'm glad they reached out because I've been using them even before this. Y'all know I like to read books and I'm constantly indulging in education. This is just another platform that I use. They go by the name of Skillshare. It's basically an online community with thousands of topics, including photography, self-improvement, and videography. A topic I recommend would be Real Productivity by Thomas Frank. Check this one out, it's dope. I like this perspective on productivity. Skillshare is less than 10 bucks a month, but I make sure that they hook y'all up so the first thousand people that click on the link below will get a free trial. Check it out guys. Now back to the tutorial. Now to focus on that right back side of the head. Again, I'm starting with the lever closed. Now I'm going to open it halfway. And finally, I'm going to open it completely. And all these steps to this fade guys are in the description down below in case y'all want to screenshot them and follow along that way as well. Now finally to focus just on the right side of the head. Again, starting with the lever closed, just repeat that same three step process guys. It's very simple yet highly effective. We're pretty much done with the fade, not to do any touch up work and remove any dark spots like this one right here. I'm gonna use my half guard and start with the lever completely open. Now when it comes to touch up work, it is I think something that you develop as you go because touch up work is gonna vary from client to client and even from one side of the head to the other. Now I'm going to use my trimmer in this direction and by using it in this direction I'm just getting a lot closer to the scalp but then I turn my trimmer around and blend in that faint line that that created. 
but you'll see as we start to remove the bottom hair there's going to be a faint line and that's exactly how high we're going to take the electric shaver up so that's the purpose of using the trimmer in that forward direction This is right here the faint line that I was mentioning. This is exactly how high we're going to take the electric shaver. But I do highly suggest that you test your trimmers inside your forearm to make sure that you're not scratching before you use them in that forward position. Now to begin with the electric shaver and a tip that I have for y'all is as y'all approach that faint line that you turn the electric shaver around and use the corners of it only as if it was a clipper just to make sure that we don't take the fade any higher than we need to. Now when I'm done with the fade I always step back and remove any frizz that sticks out as you can see right here I'm using my pinky as support on the head to make sure that I don't shake or fall into the head and cut more than I need to. And just like the edge up, I start from the center and work my way to the sides. And personally, I like to shave all my clients neck hair with my electric shaver. I know some, including like my brother, like to use the straight razor, but I guess it's because I could shave against the grain and get that much closer. And here I'm just freehanding the facial hair, giving it a better shape. Like I mentioned, just start in the center and work your way to the sides. Usually when clients have longer hair like this, I do use something called spritz, which I'll link down below. It's basically just like a uh, hairspray, but since his hair is very, very straight, I didn't need any. Here just applying a little bit of shave gel so we don't irritate them. Make sure that you do ask your client to pull his lip in to ensure a softer shave. And a quick tip I have for y'all is shave the thicker areas first. You don't want your blade to do out and you're tugging at the mustache. And when doing any razor work, make sure that you are stretching the skin with your opposite hand to ensure a softer shave. I always shave with the grain first and follow that up by shaving against the grain. Make sure you dust your client off as much as possible so that way they can go about their day after their haircut. Here I'm just using a little bit of matte pomade, really emulsifying it to where it almost disappears in my hands. And I'm just going to run that throughout the top. Applying a little bit of hair enhancement and yes, I do dilute mine half water half hair enhancement and the link is in the description down below to this tool Here's the before in case y'all forgot As you can see my man really needed it and here's the after I ate on top with a bald mid fade I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial guys Let us know down in the comments below what y'all would like for us to do next as always. Thank y'all for tuning in till next time. Peace